All right, so a few weeks ago at Adobe Max, the company announced some big updates to their Creative Cloud apps. And so like apps that were in beta and now in fully baked mode. And for photographers, we have some pretty big updates. Now, to kind of sum it up, what we used to know as Adobe Lightroom CC is now called Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. And then there was a new kind of version of Lightroom called Adobe Lightroom CC. Basically what Lightroom CC was, it's kind of like their Lightroom mobile app that you had on iOS and Android and on the web. And now there's a dedicated desktop version, which is great. Now here's the thing, there's no shortage of blog posts and videos that kind of talk about the differences between Classic and the new CC. So I don't wanna waste your time with that. However, I did get asked a bunch of times if and how I'm gonna be using it with my own photography workflow. So that's what I'd like to do here is kind of talk to you about my thoughts on the two and specifically show you, we're gonna to go to the computer in a minute and I'll show you how I'm using both of them. So here's my view of kind of what this whole Adobe Lightroom CC update is. This is more of a stepping stone for people who use this as their primary kind of photo device. People who use their mobile phones or their tablets to take their photos and to edit them and to share them. And now with this new kind of Lightroom CC strategy, it's also how you store and sync these uh, kind of photo files. Now, this is for people who want to graduate from Apple Photos or Google Photos onto something that gives you a lot more robust editing control. Well, you know, you have to kind of admit that, that when you open up Lightroom CC on your desktop or the app on your phone, you get access to some pretty powerful tools, which is great. Now, it is not meant, at least in my opinion, to be kind of a stepping stone for photographers like you and me who kind of grew up using what is now referred to as Lightroom Classic. I have a little over 240,000 photo files, which take up about six and a half terabytes on my uh, external storage. That is just simply not feasible for me to spend all of those God knows how many months uploading those raw files to the cloud. Also, at six and a half terabytes of storage, I'd have to get the 10 terabyte option, which if I remember correctly, I think is $100 a month. And that can get very, very expensive. So those are the two reasons, the cost and the time to upload that for me, getting all of my photos is not feasible. However, what is there, when did someone say that the whole point is to get every single raw photo up there? That's not the case and that's not the way that you should approach how you view Lightroom CC. I'm approaching the whole Lightroom Classic slash CC hybrid workflow in the way that Classic is where I still go to import, you know, my primary ingestion point for all of my photos, my full resolution raw files. It's where I do my very, very heavy photo editing as well as in Photoshop. And then I use Lightroom CC kind of as a place where if I want to take a specific collection of photos with me to edit, and I don't necessarily want to bring an entire catalog, I can use Lightroom CC for that. Now there is a caveat. Right now there isn't feature parity between Classic and CC. So what I mean by that is while Lightroom CC is very, very powerful, it's still missing certain features that I find very important for my editing workflow, namely access to the tone curve and split toning, along with a few other kind of important tools. Now, I know for a fact that Adobe is going to be releasing updates to Lightroom CC that will bring that functionality, but for now, Here's kind of the odd thing. Let's say you are using Lightroom CC on the desktop and you want to, you know, kind of add a split tone, for example, to a photo. You can't do that yet on the desktop, but you can fire off your mobile app and have access to split toning. And all those changes will sync seamlessly. So with that, I want to switch over to the computer and I'm going to show you kind of how I use, again, Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC uh, to identify, sync, and edit my photos kind of in this mobile photography workflow. So let's check it out. All right, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. And again, this the point here is not to sync my entire Lightroom catalog to the cloud, but rather to leverage collections and Lightroom Classic's ability to still sync with Lightroom CC. That doesn't get confusing so that I can take whatever I want specifically with me. So let's look at the collections and there are two collections in particular that I wanna point out. The first is number one called Ready to Share. And that has every photo that I've edited and I am happy with and I want to share on social media or wherever. And then the second one is number two and that's called Photos to Edit. Now this is how I'm making Lightroom CC work for me is 
that collection there, that is where I put photos. I'll browse through either through during a culling session or just when I have time and I'll go through older photos and I'll drag those photos to this collection so that I can have them with me whenever I want to edit. And you can see if I switch over to Lightroom CC, the new Lightroom, on the left, you can see there are those two same collections with the same image count. So you might be wondering, all right, well, that's cool. How do I get that going? Well, let's go back to Lightroom. And what you'll want to do is make sure you're signed into Lightroom uh, Creative Cloud. And then on the left, if you look to the left of any particular collection, and now here's an important distinction, collection. I said collection, not smart collection. Only current kind of legacy collection can sync. So um, I create regular collections. And if you click on the checkbox to the left of the disclosure triangle, you'll see there's a little icon that says uh, sync to Lightroom Mobile. So I'll click that. And what happens is the photos in that collection will now sync up. Now, if I go over to Lightroom CC, you can see the photos there are appearing. And it only takes a few seconds, which is really, really nice. So that's basically how you get your photos from Lightroom Classic over without actually migrating your catalog over. Now I wanna show you how I work with a photo. So let's open this photo up in Lightroom CC, and I'm just gonna do some quick changes. I am going to, uh, let's get a custom white balance off of the water here, and I'm gonna open up exposure just a little bit, add some contrast, open up the shadows just a little bit. And I'm just gonna also add a little bit of clarity. Not too much though. All right, so, and then actually while I'm at it, let's go to the crop here and I am going to rotate this just to straighten the horizon out. Cool. All right, so there is the image and it's good to go. And if I go back to Lightroom Classic, you can see that the changes are reflected here. Um, I can go into the develop module and have access to the changes that I made. So it's really nice and watch, let's go ahead and I'm going to really warm the image up. And if I jump over to Lightroom CC, there's that change right there, which is again, really, really cool. But let's go to the image and go to develop. And then I'm just going to change the white balance back. If you ever want to know what the status is of a photo syncing, just look at the bottom right of the thumbnail in grid view and you'll see that with this little icon here, that means that metadata is going to be syncing to cloud. Uh, when it has this little broken circle, uh, the data is synced. So what you're waiting for is for that to turn to a solid circle and then go back here and Lightroom has already updated with the new value. Now remember I mentioned that certain things like tone curves and split toning are not available, but that doesn't mean that you can't use them in Lightroom Classic and then have them available for you in Lightroom Mobile or Lightroom CC. So with the tone curve here, I'm just gonna apply a typical S curve. And I'm gonna open up the shadows just a bit to get kind of a vintagey look. Now let's go to the split toning and I'm just going to add for the highlights a little bit of a typical kind of orangey yellow and for the shadows, a little bit of a blue. And we are good to go here. Now let's switch over to Lightroom CC and you can see there are the changes that I made. Now, just remember, I don't have access to the tone curve or split toning in here, but the photo itself is available to me. So when I have an image that's ready and I wanna share it, like I said at the beginning, I'll go to the view here, I'll go to grid, and I've got my two collections ready to share and photos to edit. So I'll take the photo and I'll drag it over uh, to ready to share, and then I'll right click on the photo and remove it from the current album. Click remove photo. And then when you switch over to Lightroom, these will change. Uh, this will go down to 13. This went up to 1476 already. And there we go. So it makes those changes, not just with the edits, but the actual organization of the photos as well. So this is in a nutshell, how I am using Lightroom Classic and Lightroom CC, uh, the best of both worlds, in my opinion, to select which photos I want to edit, which photos I want to share. And I can do so uh, pretty much harmoniously between desktop and mobile. This whole workflow will function exactly the same way if you open up Lightroom Mobile on Android or iOS, your iPad, your iPhone, and that's the beauty of this. Once Adobe starts adding feature parity with things like tone curve and split toning, that's when I'm gonna get very excited about how these two programs, these two worlds interact. So I hope this gives you some good ideas in terms of how you can leverage Lightroom CC and Lightroom Classic CC 
please be sure to hit the thumbs up button if you like this video and hit that subscribe button if you loved it. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video.